Well, that's, that, that also terrified him because, um, he, he, you know, he was thinking I, I, that he just wanted to do a sort of an ensemble piece where he was just one of many and therefore he wasn't, you know, carrying the whole movie and all that. Uh, and here he, A, was carrying the movie in that sense, and secondly, every day there would be another act in there with him, so there was no chance for him to establish a sort of a rhythm. Uh, yeah. an actor. But yeah. then he, he realized very soon that that was actually an, an advantage for him because it was unpredictable. And he was, he was a beautifully uh, transparent actor who really <laughs> responds to what's there in, in, in the reality of it. And um, and so he, he would really respond to the surprises that the other actors would, would bring to him. For example, the very first scene in the moment with uh, Jay Baruchel. Uh, playing Shiner, uh, Rob was totally shocked by how emotional uh, that per performance was, and how how bare and how vulnerable this character was playing it. And it took him completely by surprise because he hadn't anticipated anticipated that kind of performance. And it immediately altered what he did. So yeah, yeah that's great. Um, just uh, one other thing I want to ask you, then we'll open it up to the audience. But there's this whole aspect in the film of like. The old world aspect of, of cities, you know, the way that, that you have like the sleek modern city, but it's existing along with sort of the decaying old city. Um, this sort of had a, a kind of flavor of, you know, sort of old ethnic New York being being there, but disappearing in a way. Yeah, uh, and I think it has actually yeah. because um, you know the, it, it's basically 47th Street is yeah. where it's supposed to be. Yeah. And the 47th Street that Delilah wrote about is almost non-existent now. All the all the places, the Mercantile Library, and some other things that like the Gotham Bookmark. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they've all disappeared. So even if we actually shot it in New York, it, we'd have to fake it anyway because th that that stuff isn't there. Uh, it was all shot in Toronto, um, and um, with but with green screen and some what we call plates that were shot in New York for, for Times Square. But you made a decision to be very abstract about the city. I mean, it's, you know, we see right away, you know, when you see, it's Union, you know, you see the Union Station, I guess, yeah, Toronto. Yeah. So you're not, there's no pretense that you're doing New York. Really. Some pretense. You know, <laughs> some, some failed pretense. Uh, that, uh, no, because, I mean, I, I did, you know, the basics. I mean, the license plates are New York license right. plates, and the street signs are New York street signs. But weirdly enough, things like that you normally worry about, what we call street print like lampposts and, and parking meters and stuff, um, they're very similar. In fact, the, the parking meters, you know, where you, you, you put your credit card in and you get a bag of stuff and you put it in your car, they're the exact same make and color and brand and everything as in mm. New York as they are in Toronto. Mm. So that was, we didn't even have to change that. It was perfect. <laughs> okay. Let's open it up to questions. So raise your hand and I'll repeat so people can hear. Um, so there's one right back there. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, the paintings, right, which are very important in the novel. So I guess what was the question, just if you could talk about those paintings, the one that's sort of abstract, one in the beginning, and then the, yeah, I'll let you say. Well, um, sure, at the, you know, you have a, a guy, a billionaire, who, who, who is an art, he, he appreciates art, he sees in the Rothkos something that he wants, you know, and, and, uh, and, and the fact that it's the Rothko Chapel says, suggests a kind of a, some kind of religious connection for him. Is it peace? Is it serenity? Is some kind of transcendence that would get him out of his, his own body and his own life? Um, but being the, the kind of guy he is, he, he the only way he can think to acquire that is to buy it. I mean, that's what he does. To when you want something, you buy it. That is the way it works with him. Um, and even that is an abstraction because he's always dealing with billions of dollars every day trading. He never really touches actual money, so it's all abstract. Uh, so that, because of that, we decided to book in uh, the film with uh, Pollock, which is not mentioned in the, in the movie or the book directly, but obviously comes you know, from the same uh, era. Um, but the Pollock is, you're seeing it being created, and it's, and it's sort of where he is at the beginning, kind of agitated and, and tricky and, and active and constantly moving. And and by the end, we have the Rothkos, which is a kind of serenity, a kind of acceptance, a kind of peace. Um, now, it's interesting to note that both those artists basically committed suicide. So 
Um, in, in, I mean, I wasn't thinking of that at the time, but I thought, well, you know, it's perfect, perfect for, for, for Eric Packer to be drawn to Arbus, who's, who's uh, acquiring a piece involved uh, self-destruction. Yeah. 